Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our final Sunday service and communion service of 2020. Boy, no one would have called this one, did they? Be able to be together the end of this year and to see what has transpired this year, yet we still have things that we can depend on, and that is God, our God, and the fact that salvation is still full and free, and that's why we're here today. Before we get into our message, I hope you have your communion elements ready. You can go get those now. If you don't, get them real quick, because we want to spend some time thanking the Lord for what He has done. You know, it's interesting because we look at 2020 and and the saying may be said nonchalantly, but it's true. One death is more than enough. And we've seen our share of deaths um, directly and not directly through this COVID pandemic. And it's sad and it hurts. Very painful. But that's what's amazing about God because there is one death that was over 2,000 years ago, that set up our salvation. And we remember that today. You see, that's what I believe communion is in Full Gospel Church. Full Gospel uh, agrees to the symbol of communion, the bread being his body, the juice being his blood. And when we partake of those elements, remember, We're agreeing together. We're agreeing that what Jesus did on the cross for us, we accept, we receive, and we know it was the way for us to come back to God. So I'm going to ask you to take your bread, and just like Jesus did with the disciples, he looked at them and said, this bread is the body, is my body, broken for you. Think of that, for you. That's why we're going to partake of it with joy and with gladness because this broken body has our salvation written all over it. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the body of Christ, the broken body, Lord, as hard as that is to to visualize, it's real. And Father, we take this with gladness and joy, thanking you for our salvation. Coming back home to you, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. And then he took the juice or the wine. And he said, this cup is my blood poured out for you. And it's the blood, the word of God tells us, that cleanses us from all sin. You've heard me sing this hymn again and again. What can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Father, we take this with gladness in our heart. Father, to realize, Lord, it is your blood that heals, that saves, that delivers us. And, Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. We did not deserve him. We could never earn it. But, Lord, we receive this gift freely. And we pray anyone that's listening would also receive this gift today. May your name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. After our song of worship, I trust you'll stay with us to listen to what's going to be our final message of 2020. And I believe it's a great message to set us up as a church, as full gospel church, for what's coming in 2021. God bless you as you enjoy the time of worship. destiny And open door 
Good morning. Good morning. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas celebration, and I hope you were able to enjoy our final communion service of 2020. Boy, we're getting ready for 21, and, and a lot of people are saying amen. And let me tell you something, 2021, we believe it's going to be different. There's no question, not at any other time can we say that. It will be different. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here to celebrate. Let's talk about what's coming in 21. Let's pray. Father, these next few minutes, they are yours, completely yours. Father, teach us. Teach us what you want us to do in 2021, Lord, <clears throat> that we would focus completely on you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, one of the things in 2020 that a lot of people kind of like, you know, really found <laughs> more helpful than not is this, you know, their telephone, their, their, their smartphone. And it's interesting because this smartphone, this computer, this, this picture, Zoom, everything, we were able through this contraption to be able in the early stages continue on with the ministry of Full Gospel Church. But there's something very interesting about this phone. As great and as wonderful and as powerful as it is, it is powerless without this. You see this? <laughs> powerless without this. These need to work together. If you don't have this plugged in, if you don't have this charging, it doesn't matter how great your phone is, it's dead. And my friends, that's what I want to talk about for 2021. I want to talk about what's going to be the most powerful aspect of a Christian's life in 2021, I would suggest to you. What is it? It's prayer. It is prayer like prayer has never gone before. Why is prayer going to be so powerful in 2021? Because prayer recharges our spirit. Our spirit is dead if it's not recharged with prayer. You could call yourself the greatest Christian. You could do a lot of things, but without the recharge of prayer, it's done. You know, a lady once asked evangelist Billy Sunday, why do you keep having revivals? When it doesn't last, he looked at her and gave this great response. <laughs> Why do you keep taking baths? <laughs> Friends, listen to me. The renewal of our spirit is not a one-time event. This phone does not stay on 24-7 for the extent of your life. And it's the same thing in our Christian life. It's, not an, it's a daily event that we need to do. Is we need to charge this phone, charge the items that need to keep us going. We need to charge and recharge our spirit. And there's a universal demonstration of that renewal in 2 Chronicles 7.14, such a familiar scripture. If my people called by my name will. How do they charge themselves and recharge? Humble themselves. If they pray, if they seek my face, if they turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, I'm not going to say this is a universal to get America back on track. But I'll tell you what, if we had millions and millions and millions and millions of people. You know, they're talking about we need 70% uh, to take the vaccine to achieve herd immunity. 70%, 80%, somewhere in that. Don't quote me, I'm not a... A, a, a scientist by any stretch, but that's the numbers I've been hearing. Can you imagine what would happen to this world if we had 70 to 80% of the population daily praying to Jehovah? Let that sink in for a second. Let that sink in. And it's got to start with us. You know, in Belfast, Ireland, in the 1930s, a church that ran about 200 experienced revival. And between 20, 12 and 20 people were saved each night. 6 p.m. every morning found 50 people in the church praying for an hour. It wasn't singing, Bible study, and prayer as much as the teacher in me wishes it was, he goes on to say. They prayed. And then he, one of the gentlemen, J. Edwin Orr, he described these prayer meetings. The prayers were short, they were simple, and they were right to the point. 
Someone prayed for God to reach her wayward son who had gotten into bad company. It was a chorus of amens and yes, lords. One prayed, please, Lord, bless the woman down the street, the one with the black eye. And then they would pray and say, yes, Lord. And someone prayed to God to bring conviction and con conversion to the man who gave her the black eye. You see, that's what the revival of does. It brings revival to our spirit and encourages our heart. So how can we achieve this revival in our lives? Well, we've got to be convinced that this revival, this renewal of our spirit is so important. We have to be convinced that there's a, 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 there's a great payoff because who wants to do something and nothing works? Can you imagine charging this for 24 hours with this? And then you wake up and you find <laughs> it's still dead. That's of course there's no power. Something was wrong here. We've got to fix this, friends, in order for this to work. That's what I want to do. And I want you to go to 2 Kings chapter number 12. I want you to look at one of the kings and what he did to bring a renewal of our spirit in our lives. Okay? 2 Kings 12 verse 1. In the seventh year of Jehu, Jehoash became king, and he reigned 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zabiah Beersheba, and Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days in which Jehoiada the high priest instructed him. Don't lose that. The high priests, uh, high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed and burned incense. On the high places. The first thing I want you to remember is this. A renewal in our spirit through prayer brings a desire, a desire for God's word. You know, it's interesting. This young man was seven years old and he became king. And he was given a mentor, the high priest Jehoiada. And as he grew under this direction, the king wanted to please Jehovah. And he noticed that the worshiping of idols, uh, the false idols, I should say, were still being conducted on the hills and the mountains to be seen of men. And King Joash uh, decided that he wanted to do what was right before God. You see, we must, in have this renewal, we must take in men and women who will challenge us in the Word of God. Challenge us in the Word of God. Of God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14 says this For you must continue in the things that you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. You know the Holy Scriptures. I want you to be careful. There are ideologies, there are thoughts, there are philosophies out there that are going to try to steer you. We've seen them try to do it in 20, okay? And some of them fell badly. Some of them have steered people away. You must remain in the Scripture. You may not see it at the moment, but the Scripture is the most powerful Powerful, powerful tool we have to be able to combat the enemy. Okay, very, very important. I'm privileged because God gave me two men that poured into my life of many men, but two, two pastors, Pastor Jim Tate from Evangel Church and then Calvary Tabernacle, and of course, Pastor Joe, Full Gospel's previous pastor. And I learned from both of them, teach the word of God. Teach the Word of God. That is becoming very unpopular today. And be careful. You hold true. That's my commitment to you. I'm holding true to preaching the Word of God. Some may want to bring things in that, you know, ideas and philosophies and values. No, we're sticking with the Word of God at full Gospel Church, because it's the Word of God that changes hearts. The second part of 2 Timothy says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete.
I mean, you're included in that. You know that. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Hey, I love this story. I want to, I've shared it before. I want to uh, share it with you again. Around 1830, Reverend Peter Cartwright was preaching a revival near Washington, D.C. And the pastor and some of the other leaders in the church found out that President Andrew Jackson was going to be uh, attending one of the revival services. Of course, they were excited about the president's visit and didn't want to offend in, in any way. So they pulled Mr. Cartwright aside and said, listen, Peter, the president's going to be here on Sunday. And we know that sometimes, you know, you can get a little offensive. So would you mind toning it down a little? We don't want you to offend the president. Well, sure enough, the president attended the service that Sunday morning, and Peter Cartwright stepped up the pulpit, and this is what he said. I have been asked to be guarded in my remarks, but the truth is, Andrew Jackson will go to hell if he doesn't repent. <laughs> well, then the pastor and other church leaders were appalled. But when the service was over, Andrew Jackson grabbed Mr. Cartwright's hand, shook it, and said, Sir, if I had an army of men like you, I could whip the world. Andrew Jackson was told very clearly what God's Word says, not what a different philosophy is, what God's Word says. Hold true to the Word of God. And when you have a renewal in your spirit, when you are praying and you are being charged, you're being charged, what's going to happen? Your spirit's going to be renewed and you're going to be able to say, this is the truth. Now, the second thing that a renewal in our spirit does, it brings a passion for God's presence, a passion for God's presence. I want you to listen to 2 Kings 12 verse 4. And then Jehoash said to the priests, all the money and the dedicated gifts that are brought into the house of the Lord, each man's census money, their assessment money, and all the money that a man purposes in his heart to bring into the house of the Lord, let the priests take it themselves, each from his own constituency, and let them repair the damages of the temple, wherever any dilapidation is found. And now it uh, was by the 23rd year, now we've moved ahead, okay, 23rd year of King Jehoash, that the priests had not repaired, are you listening, had not repaired the damages of the temple. So King Jehoash called Jehoiada, the priest, and the other priests and said, Why have you not repaired the damages of the temple? Now therefore do not take more money from your constituency, but deliver it for repairing the damages of the temple. And the priests agreed that they would neither receive more money from the people nor repair the damages of the temple. These dedicated gifts were found in Leviticus. That's why they were gone. That's why we even continue that today through tithing and giving and following a, a biblical mandate. But, but Second Chronicles, this is the backstory of this, so sad, tells us that the temple had been ransacked by Joash's mother, who had assumed control of the kingdom was an evil woman. Well, Joash set his heart on repairing the house of the Lord, and he indicated this concern. Well... He knew that a prosperous and a secure kingdom, listen to this, mattered little if the things of God were neglected or despised. And you would say amen to that, wouldn't you? Say, yeah, how can I take care of things if, if, if the temple is not taken care of? How could we do great things? And just think, the priests, when they were given the money to do, they spent them on other things instead of what they were designated for. Friends, it's the same way in our spirit. And we need to be passionate enough to whatever God has given us, we need to give out and to give back. We need to remember. Last week in our Sunday in-building session, I, I challenged that crowd that was there, those precious people that were there. And I'm giving you the same one. How many times have you stopped to say, Lord, thank you for my salvation? I mean, honestly, we assume it, we know it, but how many times, and it should be, in my opinion, a daily, daily event. Let me ask you this. Do you think God gets tired of hearing Amazing Grace sung by a believer? Do you get tired? Can you imagine if, if every Sunday, uh, you've only got a few songs on here, and I know we're going to be changing that, we're working on that, but can you imagine if, if, if every, every church service, for the last 15 years at Full Gospel, we sang one song, it was Amazing Grace. 
You say, Pastor, don't you know anything else? Well, let me tell you something. I would suggest to you that God never tires of hearing the song Amazing Grace, even after 243 years. Well, it's almost 250 that it was written. I don't think God gets tired of hearing us praise Him. I don't think God tires of our passion for Him. The problem is we tire of it because we go up and up and up and everything, and all of a sudden something happens and we go down. You see, the king said something's wrong. Something is not matching here. I'm giving you these items. You're getting these items. You're doing what God says, but yet you're not giving it. My friends, when you pray, when you pray and your spirit is renewed, you're going to want to give. You're going to want to use the gift that God has given to you. At the moment, you may not because the, the flesh is battling with the Spirit and said, you're too tired, you can't go near uh, less than six feet, you can't go, I won't wear a mask. You got all these things coming in with the flesh. And the Spirit of God is saying, go. Let this be your greatest moment because you have all these things around you and my grace is sufficient to overcome those. That's why I keep cautioning you how many times, how many times will you get on the phone, will you text somebody, will you tell them Jesus loves them? Yes, they may think you're nuts. It's okay, we are nuts. Let's make that clear. We're crazy. We're crazy about Jesus. We're crazy about the fact that we're going to be saved and going to heaven one day. We're crazy about the fact that God does the impossible. We are nuts. It's okay. Because greater things will he do when those to those who follow and obey what he says. That's why when we think about what Jesus says, that the last will be first. You live in a world that says, get first, get first. Who's getting the vaccine first? Who's getting the money first? First, first, first. And Jesus says, well, the last, if you put them first, that's what I did. Greater love is you lay down your life for someone else. That's what's missing in the world. They're all doing it through the idea of, of this, this common universal, you know, let's come together kumbaya moment. But it's not found in Christ. It has to be count, found in Christ. That's why when Paul wrote the Romans in 12, chapter 12 of Romans, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You will have a passion. Your passion will increase. That's to every child. That's to every teenager. That's to every adult. Your passion will increase. The final thing I want to bring to you is in verse 9 of 2 Kings 12. And it says, And Jehoiada the priest took a chest, bored a hole in its lid, and set it beside the altar on the right hand, on the right side, as one comes into the house of the Lord. And the priest who kept the door, put all the money brought into the house of the Lord. So it was whenever they saw that there was such money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up, put it in bags, and counted the money that was found in the house of the Lord. And then they gave the money, which had been apportioned, into the hands of those who did the work, and an oversight of the house of the Lord, and they paid it out to the carpenters and builders who worked on the house of the Lord. The final thing I want to remind you of, a renewal in our spirit brings a vision for God's people. A vision for God's people. You're seeing the birth of the offering system. All right? In a sense, we've kind of gone back to that, um, where we don't pass around the bags in building. Uh, people have been giving in the back and just dropping off, and I appreciate those that have been continued to tithe. I appreciate so many of you who have continued to tithe. We are, I, I'm just excited about your giving this year that has helped um, bless missionaries, have blessed children. Uh, the Christmas giving this year was, was off the charts. It was amazing what you have done by sacrificing and giving uh, to the work of the Lord. And I thank you for that. And, and believe me, those missionaries and those that work also thank you too. But you know what? It's interesting because when you see this, it shows that there was a way for these people to be paid immediately. It was a vision and a presentation of how to do it. And let me ask you this. When you're back to regular, well, even now, even now, 
I can go with that for a moment. When we go to the store, okay, at the moment, and, and when we hear this about a year from now or two years from now, we'll say, you're kidding. But remember, you got to map out. You got to make sure you have a mask. You got to make sure you're, 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 you're taking care of, your hands are washed. There's a plan to even go simply out the door to do what you need to do. And we say, okay, we're doing that for our physical health. We're ready for that. But did you know we need to have a spiritual plan too? It doesn't involve masks and it doesn't involve social distancing. It doesn't involve washing of the hands. We must have a spiritual plan because if we don't have a plan, then we're going to lose a generation. Proverbs 16.9 says, A man's heart deviseth his way. The Lord directs his steps. The difference between a man and the Lord is God directs the steps. You know, I remember one time hearing a well-meaning dad um, make a comment of saying, I'll leave the spiritual things for my kids to the church. That's what they're paid for. My friends, that's a man without a vision for his family. That's a man without a vision for his family. God is calling the husbands and the wives, the moms and the dads, to have a spiritual vision for your family. We are doing the best we can at the church. We're going to probably be continuing for a little while on our Tuesdays and Thursdays for our children, for Wednesdays and Fridays for our youth, for Wednesdays and Sundays for the adults. We are doing our best to bring this, but you must continue on with that. Because if there is no vision, and that's why you're going to be hearing more and more about prayer. I've talked about the fact that we have a prayer initiative coming up in the year 2021 for Full Gospel that's going to be different than we've ever had before. And I believe God laid that in our heart as our next step for this church. And, and it's, it's going to be a wonderful thing and it's going to bring power to this church more than any money or any leader ever could. So I am excited about it. But we have to be ready to renew our spirit. We have to be prepared. We have to plug in. Friends, you will not go far if this is broken, if it's damaged, if it's hurt. You will not go far. You'll say, oh, I'll just be and I'll worry about it. And, and for those who have been concerned about the government and, and, and the social unrest and, and the everything being now redefined, it's one thing that doesn't change. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. We depend on Him. And you watch the little things that He does. So again, to renew our spirit, friends, we must renew it so we have a desire for God's Word. We must renew it so we have a passion for God's people and a vision for God's people. That's what I'm praying for 2021. Of all the other things, getting ourselves back where we don't have to wear masks, where we could be closer than six feet, all that coming down the pike. My prayer is that we, Full Gospel Church, Christians uh, around the world, would unite to say our power will be in prayer. Let me close with Pastor Jim Simbola's story. And he began the Brooklyn Tabernacle as an ill-equipped, undereducated, time-strapped preacher who led a second congregation in New York. And this Brooklyn church had no money to pay him, a ramshackle building, and barely enough attendance to bother with weekly meetings. But today, the Tabernacle hosts over 6,000 spirit-filled worshipers. And the difference came when Jim, in a moment of desperation, set aside his planned message and called the church to pray. The weekly prayer meeting, not the Sunday worship, became the focal point of Brooklyn Tabernacle. Jim's belief was this, and he said this, God can't resist those who humbly and honestly admit how desperately they need him. How desperate are you for God? Are you as desperate as that um, stimulus that's coming out? Are you as desperate for the vaccine? Listen, there are businesses and there are people that are at the edge. I get that, and I do not make light of that. I get that. I know it. I've talked with them. I've prayed with them. But my friends, 
Our desperation for God has to supersede those things because God takes care of all. And when we have a passion, when we have a vision, and we have a desire for God, that it goes up. I'm not saying in my next few moments, just real quick, I'm not saying that you're going to walk around smile saying happy, happy, happy. Remember last week we talked about how we can sing a new song to the Lord without humming a tune? And that was from your actions and your thoughts. My friends, God is going to do wonderful things in 2021 if his people pray. If my people, called by my name, will humble themselves, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and heal their land. The land is not America. The land is me. I'm the land that God will heal. Because... He is in control. So my prayer is this for you. If you do not know Jesus as Savior, commit your life to him. Follow his teachings. See what he does. But Christians, get yourself back in order. Turn to the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. Hold to the Word of God. Make a declaration. Make a determination. I am I'm not going to be distracted by these things any longer. Oh, I'm not going to hide my head in the sand and I'm going to call out what's wrong is wrong and what's right is right. But also, my God is greater. My God is stronger. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today and I thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to see what 2021 is going to bring, not just for full gospel, but for our lives. And Father, I pray you would guide us, convict us, move us, help us, Lord. Father, just as this young king saw the people worshiping the idols and said, I've got to do something. Father, may we have the same attitude and say, we're going to do something. And the most powerful tool you've given us is prayer. So we hold on to that and we say, God, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If I don't see you, I don't hear from you, listen, Happy New Year 2021 is going to be great. Praise God. Have a wonderful day.